Political hardliners in Iran won a landslide victory in the country's parliamentary elections Friday. Iranian state TV says conservatives secured all 30 parliament seats for the capital, Tehran, but voters had limited options on the ballot. More than 7,000 potential candidates were disqualified, most of them reformists and moderates. Among those disqualified were 90 sitting members of Iran's 290 seat parliament who had wanted to run for re election. For more on this, Ben Ham Ben. Talablu joins me. He is a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Ben, how transparent and credible is the electoral system in Iran? And what is the reason for disqualifying so many candidates? Well, great to be with you. I think it's popularly known that Iran has more of a selection process than an election process. And in this most recent election, uh, there was an attempt by Iran's far right flank, the hardest of the hardliners, people loyal to the Supreme Leader, Ali Khamenei, to try to consolidate their gains. The Supreme Leader is moving into the eighth decade of his life and the third decade of his career. So this is really a legacy move. So this is the Supreme Leader and the authoritarian apparatus taking advantage of, of, a, of a process that has very little transparency uh, and a very high rejection rate. For the first time since the 1979 Islamic Revolution, the voter turnout dipped below 50 percent in the country. Does this show people's dissatisfaction with the Iranian government and the election system as a whole? Exceptionally. You know, Iran, particularly in the 90s and early 2000s, had this burgeoning reformist movement to try to change the system from within. Those people, starting in 2009 because of the failed uh, Green Movement uh, and street protests we saw in 2017, have moved from reform to riot and revolution. More people are dissatisfied more than ever in the Islamic Republic, and that's what led to the boycott of this election. Does this put a big question mark on the government's popularity at home? Absolutely. This government has tried to use, or tried to feign, I should say, popularity at home to deflect foreign pressure abroad. And in fact, while trying to signal strength, it has again signaled weakness. What could a more hardline parliament mean for Iran? Well, the parliament doesn't decide the foreign and security policy of the Islamic Republic. That's what matters most for America. But inside, of course, it can pass budgets, and it's a barometer of elite sentiment. So if, if you have the hardest of the hardliners in this body, expect them to try to capitalize on this momentum and gain the presidency in 2021. Could the hardliners also take a more confrontational approach with Washington? Absolutely. And let's be clear, the current president of Iran, Hassan Rouhani, I don't even believe he's a moderate. He's an old school conservative pragmatist. He's a security bureaucrat. Uh, but they're even looking to press him and to get him to be more of a lame duck in his last year of his presidency. Uh, he's taken this policy of first strategic patience and now graduated escalation with America. These guys in parliament now may want to take an overt, direct escalatory policy, particularly on the nuclear issue. Ben Ham, Ben Talablu, thank you. Thank you.